thank you for having me here. Uh, Sakshi Modi wrote to me a few weeks ago, or a few months ago to say, will you come and do this? And I said, it would be my pleasure to do this. Uh, I worked in large companies all my life, but I put a few slides together for you to say small versus big. What does it mean to work in a small company? And what is it in contrast to working for a large company? Okay, so that's what I'm going to speak to you over the next maybe 20 minutes. Okay, so let's go. First, I'm sure as you sit here today, <coughs> the question in your mind is, I'm in a small company. How do I fight the big companies? Okay, I'm sure this is a question in your mind. Wherever you go, whether you're in marketing, whether you're in sales, whether you're in supply chain, etc., that will be the question in your mind. I propose to you that that should not be the question in your mind. Maybe there should be something else. And as you sit here today, should you be thinking very differently? And that differently is about your strengths, playing to your strengths. And I'd leave you with two questions. What are those two questions? First, how does a small, fast company beat a slow, big company? That should be the question in your mind. The question is not whether you're small. The question is, add the objective fast to it, and then you have a very different dimension. If you look at the last 20 years, no big company has beaten a small company anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. Okay, it's a fast company which beats a slow company. Big companies don't beat small companies anymore. Fast companies beat slow companies. So speed becomes a huge ingredient for success. And a small company is better suited for speed than a large company, is my first point to you. Okay? So how does a small, fast company beat a slow, big company, is my first question. Second, how does a small, focused company beat a big, broad company? Small company has a lot of focus. Use that to your advantage. And don't ever worry about you know, the huge range that a big company has. The huge range a big company has in, in many cases is actually a deterrent for success. So let's start at the beginning. Let's begin at the beginning on this whole big versus small debate. First, every big company of today was once a small company. Remember that. Every big company of today was once a small company. However, every small company of today will not become a big company. Some will become, and I'm sure you'll become one, and I'll tell you what are the ingredients when a small company becomes a big company. Okay? So every big company of today was once a small company. Keep that in mind. So I'll tell you, even in, you know, when I started with Nokia, Nokia was a very small company in India. Okay? We finally became, in 2011, a $4 billion company. Uh, we started small, but we really scaled it and built it to huge size. Many of the brands I've handled were very small brands when they started, but then they became very big brands uh, by the end of you know, five, ten years, and I wish the same for you. So my first question for you is, how big is big and how small is small in FMCG in India? Okay, you're in the FMCG sector, so I'll give you some data from the FMCG sector. If you look at the FMCG sector, the total market is 307,000 crores all FMCG put together. Branded FMCG is 307,000 crores. There are 1,563 companies working in the FMCG sector in India. Only 378 companies have a turnover of more than 10 crores. So if I slice that by 100 crores, it's quite likely that there'll only be about 250 companies with a turnover of more than 100 crores in India. And you'll be one of them. So look at it from that point of view as opposed to saying, hey, I'm not a large company. Okay, you're one of 250 companies which is sold through 10 million retail outlets in India. There are 10 million retail outlets in India, 250 companies with a turnover of more than 10 crores, of which you're one of them, and total FMCG, there are only 1,563 companies. The market is big, 307,000 crores. Clear? Understood? So that's my point to you. So, most data shows that big companies grow slower than small companies. You know, every year, you look at the newspapers, you look at the reports, etc., big companies grow much slower than small companies. So, I've always been fascinated by this, and I've always asked myself why. And every big company I used to work in, or I have worked in, I always tell people, 
please think like a small company and behave like a small company. That's when we'll win. If, we, if a big company behaves like a big company, it will lose. I promise you. If a small company behaves like a big company, it will lose. A big company must behave like a small company and a small company must behave like a small company. That's when they will. Okay? So why is that so? Why is the mindset that? Here's the first point. Big companies are resource rich but idea poor. Big companies have money but they don't have ideas. That's the problem with large companies. I worked in some of the largest companies in the world. I can tell you that for a fact. There's too much money, people want more money. But the problem is not money. The problem is lack of ideas. At in any part of the chain, ideas in sales, ideas in marketing, ideas in supply chain, etc. They lack the idea but have the resource. That's one of the things of a big company. Second, big companies are process led. Small companies are intuition driven. Big companies have process for everything. If you have more than 100 people, you need process. But process should not stifle you. Process should not stifle creativity. Process should not stifle speed. And that's what happens in large companies. Okay, good managers ensure that there is speed in a large company. By definition, small companies are intuition driven. And you should play to that intuition as opposed to, you know, trying to copy a big company on process. That's what I would tell you is my next point. Third, big companies are mechanical in the way they work. Everything is mechanical. 9 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 1 to 1.30 break, everything is mechanical. Whereas small companies are maniacal in their approach. Small companies have a passion and urge to win every day. Okay, it's that passion which a large company can never replicate. Okay, a large company will throw a lot of money to get that passion. But the heart, that maniacalness is only there in a small company. Okay, never ever lose it. Big companies have committees. Small companies have commitment. Okay, that's the other thing. Keep this in mind. Okay, big companies have big committees. You know, <coughs> there's a committee for everything. Uh, first approval, second approval, third approval. For this, this keeps going up. Till the, till the final committee looks at it and people are then ask, why, ha why are we meeting at all? That's what happens. Whereas small companies have immense commitment. The difference from a proposal to an agreement could be a few seconds or a few hours. Okay, so that's what you need to think about. Okay, big companies are slowed down by committees. Small companies are energized by commitment. Big companies are scared of losing. You know, you talk to any big company, they're very scared of losing. But small companies are excited about winning. Big companies are scared of losing even a very small thing. Okay, but large companies always have that problem. On the other hand, small companies are extremely excited about winning and winning every day. And that's the excitement that you must bring to the table about how you take on your competitors. The paradox is that small companies need the swag of a big company. Small companies need to have the swagger of a large company, the confidence, etc. While the big company needs the nimbleness of small company. That's what's needed actually today. Big companies are mostly arrogant, while small companies are sometimes timid. Most big companies are arrogant because of their size. They think size is a big benefit. No longer true. Okay, as I mentioned to you. Okay. Small companies, on the other hand, are timid in their approach. Should we do this, not do this, etc. I would say be brave. Whatever you are trying, wherever you are trying, be brave. Okay, as they say in cricket, bat of the front foot, don't get onto the back foot. Okay, small companies must bat of the front foot. There is no back foot for small companies, keep that in mind. That's the way you must always be, you know, when you work. Big companies are tolerated by the ecosystem. I saw that you have partnerships with the modern trade people, etc. Okay, big companies are tolerated because of their size, but small companies are loved by the ecosystem. So if you talk to anybody in the ecosystem, they love a small company, they want the small company to do well. And that should be your strength, that should be your advantage. When you work with modern trade, when you work with e-commerce, whoever it is, okay, they will love you because they want you to grow. They want you to do better so that they can challenge the big boys. Okay, so big companies are tolerated by the ecosystem, small companies are loved by the ecosystem. I used to say this in Nokia that, we must be the most loved brand in this country, not just by consumers, but even by trade. 
because when you are very big, trade normally tends to hate you. Okay, and we put many programs for Nokia to be a loved brand, even in trade. Okay, so you have that natural advantage, build partnerships with the ecosystem and become a loved brand in the ecosystem. Big companies have old knowledge. Small companies have new hunger. Okay, big companies have a lot of old knowledge. So you talk to any executive in the big company, he will tell you 19, you know, uh, 2014 this happened, etc. How does that matter today? Doesn't matter. Okay, 2014 we sold so much. Yeah, 2018 you might not even sell anything. Okay, so big companies rely on a lot of old knowledge. Small companies need to have hunger day in and day out. Hunger means when you go to the distributor, when you supply anything, you talk to your vendor, every morning, hunger must go up 0 to 100 at 9 o'clock. And that hunger must stay through the day. That's how you will win. You will not win by repeating what the big company does ever. That will never happen. Big companies think in single digits. If big company grows 4%, they're very happy. If they grow 5%, they're very happy. They're delighted. They say, oh, we grew high single digit. High single digit means 6%. But you know what? Small companies, I seriously challenge you. You should go out of this conference to say, why can't I grow 100%? Ask yourself that question. You'll be surprised with the answer. Why can't I grow 75%? Why can't I grow 50%? You know, for small companies, 50% should be a benchmark minimum. When you do that, the greatest satisfaction is to you. Remember that. You will be seen as a high growth manager. Okay, growing at 5%, growing at 50%, the mindset is very different. Very, very different. Okay, so I would seriously urge you, big companies are happy growing single digit. But you should be thinking seriously, high double digit, why not triple digit? Okay, ask yourself, and I would urge the HR team to set up a, for the sales team at least, okay, a century club where people who grow 100%, you know, are rewarded. Think like that. Okay, it's possible in today's India. Do not ever think that it's not possible. If you are 200 crores today, nothing stops you from becoming 400 crores in 2020. It's imagination. Okay, I went back, I go back to my first slide. It's not about resources, it's about ideas. Many ways you can do it. Okay, the chemist is a big channel for you. Okay, dominate the chemist channel. Let me give you a very good example. Uh, I did a similar speech in 2010 to a small company then, which is now a very big company. And that company is Himalaya. Okay, company was Himalaya. One of my ex-marketing managers, Saket Gore, was the uh, head of the company. He called me to speak to them. And so and I urged them the same thing. I said, why don't you beat the big companies in modern trade? Today, Himalaya face wash is number one in modern trade. Number one. Ahead of Hindustan, Liva, ahead of everybody else. Its shampoo is in the top three. So you have to focus on a channel and really beat the living daylights out of those guys. Okay, so it's possible. Himalaya is a very big company today, suddenly. It's taken eight years. Okay, you can do the same. And I'm sure eight years from now, when somebody else comes to speak here, you'll tell them that you're a very large company. It's fully within your grasp. Don't ever forget it, okay? So think high double-digit growth. 50% should be the cutoff. Absolutely, you know? And start thinking about that. Big companies lack feeling. <coughs> Small companies have a, we are all in it together. That feeling you should never lose. Okay? That feeling you should never lose. The brotherhood of that feeling is very important in order to win. I cannot tell you how important it is. When you have that feeling that we are all in it together and we're going to beat every single person, who comes in front of us on the street, you will make a very big contribution to success. Okay? That we are in it together is an important feeling. That's not a feeling you get in large companies. That much I can tell you. I worked in many large companies, as you know. Okay? We are in this together is very important for you. Big companies give you specialization. So they give you specialization in marketing, in sales, in supply chain, in HR, etc. Whereas small companies give you breadth of experience. You know, you end up doing everything in a small company. That's only natural. Okay, you back up for somebody, you learn about somebody, you work in a committee, you work in teams, whatever it is, but you learn a lot. Your experience curve and learning moves up very sharply in a small company. That's not true in a large company. In a large company, you won't be, won't be invited to meetings. Okay, you'll say, okay, you're handling this, please stay there. Okay, so there are huge benefits by being in a small company which gives you that flexibility. Okay? 
So, in conclusion, I would leave four thoughts for you. Okay, as you plan your next year and you finish your awards, all the successful people of last year will collect their awards, go back home, whatever it is. Four thoughts for you. Number one, a small company must have big dreams. Cannot tell you how important it is. You must have big dreams. If you are not dreaming big, ladies and gentlemen, I am not, you know, paid by Sakshi Modi, nothing. Okay? I have just come here to tell you what my philosophy is. If you don't have a big dream, you shouldn't work for J.L. Morrison. Remember that. You must have a big dream for J.L. Morrison. And in achieving that big dream, you will achieve your dream. So small companies must have very, very big dreams. Every night you must go to bed thinking, what is my big dream? Small companies cannot have small dreams. That's my first important point to you as you leave this room tomorrow or tonight. Second, a small company must be merciless on the weakness of a big company. So in each of the categories you operate in, okay, toothpaste, baby care, etc., ask yourself, what is the biggest weakness of the market leader or the, the top three players? Be merciless on that. Absolutely merciless. That's what small companies have to do. You have to be merciless on the weakness of a you know, large player. So start thinking, when you go to a retail outlet, when you go to modern trade, when you go to advertising, what is the weakness of the large guy? Murder him. Okay? Absolutely murder him. That's what I would say is point number two. Point number three, a small company must be more technology enabled than a big company. This is the equalizer or the benefit now. In the old physical world, a large company had lots of benefits. Today, thanks to technology, you can get information, you can get insights faster than a large company. You can be very, very quick. Okay? So all the work you do, try and make it as technology enabled as possible compared to a big company. And my last one is small companies should have as little fixed cost as possible. Every cost must be a variable cost. I ran Nokia like that. I ran PepsiCo like that. I turned every cost into a variable cost. I said, only if we sell, we incur this cost. Otherwise, there's no cost. I'm happy not to have cost. The more fixed cost you have, the more depreciation you have, the more margin you need. When you turn everything into a variable cost, you can be very, very swift. So small companies cannot have high fixed costs. You must start thinking of a mentality where you work only on variable costs. Everything should be variable. Convert everything into variable cost. And finally, your working capital must be negative. That's how you'll get to it. I run a business in uh, Birla called Birla White Business, a cement business, apart from my role as strategy head. We have negative working capital there. Okay? It's a large business, but we have negative working capital. So you really need to address costs and cut them. You must say, costs, there are two types of costs, you know, lest you get me wrong. There are what are called good costs and bad costs. First, let me explain what a bad cost is. A bad cost is inventory. High inventory is a bad cost, whether you like it or not. Okay. People want high inventory at the end of the month, bring on the month, don't have it. High inventory is a bad cost, a huge bad cost, don't even have it. Too many SKUs is a bad cost. You have to trim your SKUs, have the right SKUs. Okay, so today I saw, I think you have 65 or 75 SKUs. Ask yourself, can I work with 65? In PepsiCo beverages, we had 230 SKUs. Okay. And I did the analysis, the top 15 SKUs and beverages accounted for 85% of business. So I told the guys, look, I want all the sales managers forecasting only on 15 SKUs, forget everything else. Okay. When you focus, you do better. The human mind always thinks, I have 60 SKUs, if I add another 10, I'll sell more. No. It's actually counterintuitive. Great marketing and great sales is, the fewer you have, the better you'll sell them. And hence you'll have lesser write-off and lesser uh, you know, inventory, etc. So that's bad cost. Inventory is bad cost. SKUs is bad cost. Being profligate is bad cost. Okay? Those are bad costs. Good cost. What are good costs? Investment in training and development is a good cost. Investment in functions like this, which is award functions, is a good cost. These are costs we must... Investing in people and everything to do with people's motivation is a good cost. So in your mind, when you look at costs, please divide them into what are good costs and bad costs. 
Okay, and if you trim the bad costs, you'll become more profitable and more focused. Okay, that's been my experience. So in summary, every big company of today was once a small company. But every small company of today will not become a big company. In the FMCG sector that you operate in, the total value of the FMCG market is 307,000 crores. Okay, there are 1,563 companies with a turnover of more than 10 crores. If I take 100 crores as the cutoff, there are about 250 companies. So you'll be one of those 250 companies and one of those 250 companies serving 10 million retail outlets. Be merciless on the weakness of a big player. Focus on a geography, focus on a channel. Okay, you're going to win that way. And whatever you do, the greatest strength a small company has is its people, is its emotion, is its commitment. Okay, and always have very, very big dreams. I'd be very happy to know from Sakshi, maybe by 2025, that you become a very large company, a very profitable company, a very distinct company in India, but still with the soul of a small company. That's what I have tried to run all the businesses that I have run in my life. I've always told them, think like a small company. So I'm no stranger to thinking small. Okay, I wish you the very best for a very happy next year. All the best.